The original PlayStation or PlayStation 1 was released in December 1994 in Japan and almost a year later in North America and Europe. There are quite a few left out there, as Sony reports having sold nearly 103 million units. They manufactured the PS1 until 2004 and released the last game for it in 2006. 1994 was a time when much of the electronics was still manufactured in Japan. Today, the Made in Japan tag means superior quality for long-lasting products. Many revisions were made to the interior components of the PlayStation. Two significant versions of the whole unit itself were made. The newly redesigned one was called the PS1. So, although we refer to the original PlayStation as the PS1 because it was the first, the original was called PlayStation, while the redesigned 2000 version is the PS1. At the time, its biggest competitor was the Nintendo 64 with 33 million units sold. The PlayStation boasted 2 megs of RAM and 1 meg of VRAM or Video RAM. But the one specific thing that set it apart from the Nintendo 64 was that its games were a whopping 650 megabytes compared to the cartridge-based console whose games ranged in sizes between 4 to 64 megabytes. It was costly and challenging to develop these ROM cartridges and their limited storage capacity constrained the game's content while the PlayStation allowed for 3D graphics and music. This led most third-party developers of the Nintendo 64 to switch to the PlayStation, such as Square Enix, whose Final Fantasy VII and Dragon Quest VII games were initially intended for release on the Nintendo 64. Another interesting fact is that audio files state that the original PlayStation model is one of the best audio CD players out there, outshining even some of the best players around today. Some of this is explained by the fact that the original PlayStation used a high-end DAC or digital to analog converter chip that is better than the ones found in most consumer CD players made today. Stick around and watch me completely restore this PlayStation and give it a new life. Hello everyone and welcome, I'm the Retro Repair Guy. Thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers. Now today is a bit of a cheat now, <laughs> let me explain. Um, I didn't fix anything for this episode, this is the Sony PlayStation from episode 1. And uh, I just happened to see it recently and it was just bothering me, you know. I didn't know exactly where I was going with the show when I made it. And I hadn't been in front of a camera in a long time. I hadn't edited it in a long time. So, you know, th all this stuff just bothered me a little bit, like Superman's CGI'd mustache. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured, you know, you're watching it and oh, something's wrong. So I figured this is my director's cut. There's, uh, I would estimate, about 10 to 12 minutes uh, of extra footage. I dug up everything I had on it. So I revamped it, re-edited, uh, new music, etc. Some new narration, better explanation. Uh, anyways, I, I hope you enjoy it and let's go take a look. The specific model we're looking at today is the SCPH7501, giving it a manufacturing date of late 97 to 98. It's classified as a revision C hardware and made for the US and Canada market. The previous revisions had issues with the CD player, which caused problems with the FMV or full motion video. FMV is when a player experiences skipping or choppy sound during an animation. Revision C hardware, starting with the 5001 series and on, corrects this issue. The fix is achieved by reinforcing the lens carriage. Inside this hardware revision of the PlayStation, you'll find four components, the main board, the power supply, the CD unit, and the joystick ports. Today we'll be focusing on a common failure, the power supply. If you got a dead unit as I have here, the very first thing you'll want to look at is the power supply board, or as it's referred to in the service manual, the power block. Here you'll want to look at two particular components, the fuse and the capacitors. The capacitors are aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Electrolytic capacitors means there is liquid inside that can leak and cause damage or short circuits. You'll want to inspect the board for any burns or liquids. Take down the values, unless your capacitors are too foobar. We're going to get foobar now. What the hell is foobar? You'll see. And look something like this, then you can refer to the manual. It's never a bad idea anyways in case somebody's been there before. My demographics show me that people watching this show should know what foobar means. Now if you don't know, in a nicer way, it means messed up beyond any recognition. Now your capacitors don't have to be foobarred in order to be messed up. White papers from manufacturers stress enough that the capacitors have a 15 to 20 year lifespan and again, depending on what environment they're in, if they heat up, etc, etc, will shorten their life. This is a game console. Most likely it's heated up 
and was used a hell of a lot. So I'm betting more on the maybe 10, 15 years. Let's go with 15 years, even if it was 20. These are 27 year old. This was built in 1994 and I'm sure it's gotten its fair share of use. Now, the thing is, is that before I knew even about the audio file thing, um, which I know is the audio earlier models, not this one. Um, I was reading some people saying they plug it in one, two, three, up to five days before using it. Something smells bad here, okay? I'm smelling bad capacitors. Now, the thing is, if you recap the unit, all you're doing is preventative maintenance, as well as it's gonna give you the best uh, bang for your buck, you know? It's gonna work well, it's gonna sound well, and everything. So go ahead and change those capacitors. It takes an extra minute to remove the fuse and visually inspect it. The size of the fuse should be a 250 volt, 2 amp fuse. Also, test it with a multimeter for continuity. All right, let's go ahead and remove the capacitors. I like to use a desoldering pump. You can use a desoldering gun if you wish, but I think it does a pretty good job. With the capacitor removed, I then proceed to clean the board. I like to use 99.9% .9 alcohol as it doesn't leave a residue and evaporates quickly. I make sure to clean up any residue left from the old capacitor as well as any residue left behind by my soldering. Now the board is ready to install a new capacitor. Now you can see this was truly manufactured in Japan. It's an SMG capacitor which was made by Nippon Kimikon Corporation in Japan. Now when replacing capacitors I like to work with Nishikon capacitors. Nishikon is also a highly respected Japanese manufacturer so you know you're getting a quality product that should last. Whatever you opt for it's important to note the size and length of the capacitor. If a capacitor is too long for example it could prevent the case from closing and if it's too large it could prevent other components from going in. Now if you've gone ahead and removed the capacitor and don't remember what side it goes in, there's a negative and a positive side. The semicircle here indicates the negative side. Installing the new capacitor is pretty straightforward. Simply 
put the legs through the holes, make sure it's seated properly, spread the legs a little bit to make sure that it holds in place, and then solder. I'm soldering with 0.8 millimeter 6040 Rosen core solder. When soldered, cut off the extra metal legs. Make sure you don't cut too close to the soldering points. And that's all there is to it. I'll solder the rest off camera. I quickly checked the two 560 microfarad capacitors I removed. This is a cheap little machine, but it does the job. For one of the capacitors, I couldn't even get a value, and for the other, I got a value of 620 microfarads and an ESR of 4.4, which is basically resistance. ESR changes as components age, and this is not good. We can compare the readings to a brand new one, 574 microfarad and an ESR of 0.25. The new capacitors should last for years to come and will certainly give this old unit a new life. Now many of you may not like me for doing this, but I like to restore things to the original state. This board clearly has a mod chip. It's very hard to make out, but in this case it's a 12C508, a very common chip that was used to circumvent the copy protection and region coding. I'm not against modding, but I can see this is very old and poorly installed. Before removing the chip, I checked the installation procedure for this particular motherboard, the PU-22, and it didn't call for the removal of any resistor or other components. The wires were simply soldered to specific locations on the motherboard. I inspected each point where the mod had been soldered and cleaned it all up. To clean the lens, I'm using a swab with 99% alcohol, but you can use 70% rubbing alcohol. Apply it to the swab and gently rub the optical lens to remove any dirt. I hope you enjoyed this uh, remake and this uh, kind of director's cut of episode one. I'm going to ask you all, please write me a comment in the comment section because I'm trying to be all over the place and being diverse here, you know, from a game console to a Commodore 64 to a video camera. Uh, but if there's anything specific that you want to see me fix, 
Um, let me know. I'll try to get my hands on it and I'll try to fix it uh, because I get comments left and right, but I don't get anything specific. Uh, and I would really like to make you happy, the viewers, um, to give you more of what you want. And I'm going to ask you to please, please uh, support the channel in ways that you can. They don't even cost money. Just thumbs up. It's like restoring an old car. I mean, you need pa patience and come on. What's wrong with this freaking thing? Compared to the two to four sixty. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right. Well, for this very first video, I'll end it here. If I even get one subscriber, I'll keep making uh, more of these videos. Uh, reading this thing. Uh, Game Shark, actually, sorry. Something called. Rewind. All right. Well, for this very first video, I'll end it here. If I even get one subscriber, I'll make more of these inform informative videos. Please leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know if you'd like to, some, to see something specific. Why is that one complicated? If there's uh, anything specific, um, but I did want to redo it. It was bothering me, you know, a little bit like, you know, um, some are 15, 20 years, and this is, of course, 20 years, not 20 something years, right? So, um, 27, 26, 27 years. Anyways, that's cool. Beyond any recognition. And aside from that, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.